Hey guys, it's Ike, and welcome to the 11th episode of Shadow's House. A little bit of a recap, we saw the Shadow Masters and the Living Dolls that passed the debut, and we saw who didn't pass. Surprise, surprise. Still got me anyways because of the, uh, because of the freaking music, but also being able to hear Shirley's voice for the first time before, you know, she just fucking fades away like Thanos snapped her. It was, uh, it, it was quite sad. Then after that, we head into a banquet in order to celebrate the shadows that had passed to debut, and we are introduced to the dank juice that we find out has a little bit of soot from the grand creator, and if living dolls drink it, they'll end up, uh, being brainwashed, essentially, and have an undying loyalty to the grand creator, but it doesn't really do anything to the shadows because it's just Sue, it doesn't really affect the shadows themselves. And despite it not working on the shadows, I think it was Ryan who said it, as long as you have the living dolls under control, then the shadows might just conform with the, the living dolls as well and just kind of give up that whole rebellion stage that they might have. But other than that, let us get started. God, I am like drinking straight chocolate. Oh no, she's singing that song. Mm-hmm. You were made to drink it again. I, I assume that might be uh, what she's talking about in the first episode when in the beginning of episode one we had seen the dank juice right there and then and we had seen lines of uh, living dolls drinking such dank juice. My dearly beloved. Oh, <laughs> Maybe during this time, Kate's rummaging through Emiliko's stuff and she'll find out about suit sickness. <laughs> if it's the same thing like suit sickness, just drink water. I think I've said this about the, the theme of Shadow's House, but I really like- <laughs> I, I really like the, the nice- Don't show me this! How dare you! <laughs> Get her out of here. She's not she's not relevant anymore. I completely forgot I was about to say. I, I I've just I got distracted by rum. Before the debut. I don't know why the subtitle just vanished right there. Yeah, so shadows can't meet with each other and even befriend each other before the debut. It's absolute. Cherish your contact. They don't teach children what's really important. Hmm. Hey, you know, maybe you'll find her don't fret. Yeah, now she isn't keeping it. <laughs> Damn, dude. Doesn't get played for a while. Yeah, and you crashed him. Oh, there it is. <laughs> right? <laughs> I just find it funny. <laughs> drink lots of water. Yeah, get her to drink a lot of water. Just drink it until she can't drink anymore. 
Just shove the entire thing down her throat, man. It's all right. <laughs> Insane loyalty. Now, nah, man, you're gonna drink the entire thing. You would fix it, yeah. Hey, keep all that water inside, Emiliko. Oh, she had low. She, what is this? Suit tears? Well, we got Emily go back, so that's nice. <laughs> Is she ste- Oh no, that's the towel. I was like- <laughs> I thought she was just steaming. Ooh. Secrets? Is she gonna- Oh, we're actually getting to see the villagers. Oh. <laughs> I just find it funny that Ryan has like fucking crazy eyes, just like Edward. <laughs> Makes the villager easier to manipulate. The suit call prevents normal thinking. Okay, yeah, okay, so I assume this is part of what Kate will be telling to Emily Go. What's your offering? Kids, of course. <laughs> God, Ryan, your eyes. There's the dank juice! And they're going back up. Definitely, they will live a privileged life. That's nice. They told us about the process in the previous episode, and now they're just showing it to us. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> Oh, 
Who would have thought, huh? You're telling me that the grand creator didn't create these living dolls by his own hands? <sniffs> Fucking liar that guy is. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna blow up this house. I mean, I know you didn't say that, but we're gonna blow up this house. <laughs> left her bread on the ground. Oh! He also saw it. Wow, John is just... All right, John. Damn, John. You are you are you here to be engaged? <laughs> oh, damn, dude. She just spills it right here and then. <laughs> She's just hiding. Yeah, this Sean's no fun. Let's shove some water down his throat, huh? Oh, damn! Oh, we're gonna have a- No, no, no. Don't stop them. They're about to have a fist fight. Yeah, man to man. <laughs> oh! <laughs> He's gonna punch the suit out of him. <laughs> Oh, John's so passionate. Oh, snap, dude. <laughs> he really is going to punch the suit out of him. <laughs> this is like a this is like an RPG game where they just take turns hitting each other. Meanwhile, Kate's over here like, y you could have just gotten him some water. <laughs> Look, sh fucking Sean snapped out of it. <laughs> Look at this, Kate. We could have had a slap fest with, with you and Emiliko. I <laughs> just slapped the suit out of her. <laughs> oh, there's... Show- what are you gonna show her? Lou's face? <laughs> Louis really out here gonna come and brag. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, everybody's all here together. And, and Kate's just out here revealing the truth to everybody. Hey, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Luis is really out here just wanting to show off her fucking power to Kate specifically. <laughs> She's out here knocking on Kate's door just to like, yeah, I wanted to show you this. <laughs> but also, my favorite thing with Luis is like, who's Emiliko again? I only I, I only care about myself. <laughs> No, she's too busy. <laughs> Uh-oh. What? But we don't have time to waste, Luis. What's this giant piano? Oh my god. The heavy handed tactics. Wait a minute! Those pants! They look just like Edward's pants! <laughs> Edward! Uh. As soon as. Such vulgar attire. He's just wearing a fucking <laughs> veil doll dress. <laughs> and it's, in, it's not even long enough to cover his fucking stupid looking pants. <laughs> Must mistrust Kate, yeah. Yeah, we should all team up and beat Edward up. Yeah, Patrick. It was one of those- it was, it was a shadow, except in phase one. Wait, I don't think Patrick has gotten Ricky off of the- Off of the dank juice yet, the I legit just thought about, let me go to the next episode and start watching that, but I forgot I have to do my afterthoughts and shit. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, back to the center. Alright, so that was episode 11 of Shadow's House. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. You know that I always like talking to you guys. For me, I thought that this was a good follow-up episode to the previous, uh, to, to the previous episode. <laughs> we, uh, we, we got to learn... Uh, a few things, and we had the revealment that the living dolls are not living dolls at all. They're actually humans. Surprise, surprise, right? Who would have fucking thought that they were actually humans all this time? <laughs> But back to the beginning, we saw Kate looking at a drugged Emiliko, and it reminds her of the first time they've met each other, which is understandable because that was also within the period of time when Emiliko had drank the dank juice for the first time, and that had wiped her memory and gave her a, a loyalty towards the Shadow's house and the Grand Creator and such. Kate felt like they had made progress throughout their interaction with each other and that she thought Emiliko was starting to regain her sense of self, but that progress was wiped out by the dank juice yet again 
and it makes Kate feel very sad. Uh, the other thing that we heard was that because during the first day she she thought that Emily Go was uh, was being a little bit too loyal in a sense to the Shadow's house, she didn't trust Emily Go at first. So that makes me wonder if when Kate uh, had gotten her body and such and she, she she started I assume gaining consciousness or something like that when she she's just sitting in her room all the time. It makes her wonder about the shadows house and why things operate this way. You know, I feel like she's just naturally curious and that starts that made her question a whole lot more. I don't know how she managed to learn about uh, that the living dolls are actually humans, consider that even John didn't know about that. <laughs> I wonder I wonder where she, she managed to get that information from. But after that, we see Kate rummaging through Emiliko's room and she finds Emiliko's Don't Fret notebook, where she writes all the things she wants to forget, despite not realizing that once you write something down, it can help you remember things a lot better. But she also doubled it as a diary as well. <laughs> So uh, Kate was able to read through Emiliko's thoughts and what she was going through during those times, you know, with like the Night Watch and the, uh, the the Scorch and such, the Phantoms. Through Emiliko's book, Kate finds out about suit sickness and how to cure it, which is to just make people drink a whole lot of water. And that's what she decides to do for Emiliko and just <laughs> makes her, look man, don't even get her to drink it cup by cup, just shove the entire veil down her throat. <laughs> <laughs> That'll get her. But as she does that, she asks Emiliko about rum and by the final times, Emiliko finally remembers and they, they both have a low cry session about it. I, I thought it was really nice just seeing Kate feeling very uh, emotional about uh, about Emiliko really shows how far they've gone with each other. You can saw that you saw that she you know she had a little sniff while reading through Emiliko's diary slash don't fret notebook. And you saw she was in tears watching Emiliko suffer from drinking so much water. <laughs> and then again, they, they both have a nice low cry out session, which is just, uh, which is just fantastic. But after Emiliko regained her consciousness or her sense of self, she is kidnapped by a veiled doll. And because of that, uh, Kate finds out about it and she runs over to John's room in order- Well, actually, uh, before that, she also uh, revealed the truth about, uh, about the living dolls and that they're not really living dolls, they're just humans that have been brainwashed. And we saw the process with it through Ryan and Dorothy where they come down to the village and they have suit coil, a uh, suit coal. They offer that suit coal for the offering of children. And uh, Ryan had said that because this place is kind of covered in suit and the humans keep sniffing the <laughs> sniffing, they keep inhaling the little suit from the suit coal. Their, their thinking isn't really correct, so they're not really thinking properly. And because of that, they're just gladly willing to give up their children and under the disguise of they are going to work for the uh, Shadow's house and that they're going to live a privileged life. <laughs> because of course, you know, of course. Then after Kate tells Emiliko about that, uh, Emiliko gets kidnapped by the Veiled Doll. Kate finds out about that, she runs to John and she confesses the whole thing to John about the fact that living dolls are actually humans and that she, she, she asks, isn't Sean acting differently from how he used to be? And so John gets into a fist fight with Sean, which is just hilarious because look, it's either you drink a lot of water or we're gonna have a punch out session. We are gonna fight the suit out of ya. So, they, they had a bit, they had a little fist fight and because of that, Sean regains his sense of self and they start making their way towards somewhere in some room, I don't know, but we saw a scene with Louise knocking on Kate's door, trying to, trying to brag to her, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Fucking Louise, dude. She's really out here. She was knocking on Kate's door. She didn't. She didn't hear Kate answering. So she wanders off, and she eventually finds Kate and Sean together. And that was when they all end up meeting up. Which I assume maybe Kate and John were knocking at Patrick's room. 
it's because Patrick is here now. So they're all inside the room and they start having a talk and Kate reveals that Emily goes missing. And <laughs> you can see that Patrick's over here like, what, Emily goes missing, hold on. While Louise is like, who's Emily go again? I completely forgot, I only care about myself and Lou, of course. We did see a little bit of Louise's ability, which is what she wanted to show off to Kate. I realized she might have wanted to show that off because of uh, Kate showing off her suitability as well. <laughs> Just really gotta, really gotta try and one up her, or at least be like, "Yeah, you're not better than me. We are at." Equal standing now, but just you wait, I will be better than you, says Louise. <laughs> but we saw her power, which is uh, through the- uh, she just shoves suit down Louise's throat. Louise's? Lou- Louise's put suit in Lou's mouth, and that controls- that controls the emotion, or at least controls Lou, and she can just get Lou to show any sort of uh, emotion phase that she wanted. But back onto the topic of the kidnapped Emiliko, Louise reveals that she did see a tall veiled doll with a cart of a uh, living doll on it, and she reveals that that veiled doll is, <laughs> is Edward because of his ugly ass pants that he's revealing under the dress. <laughs> I can't remember if Louise said she knew where he was taking her, but they are now determined knowing that the person who kidnapped Emiliko is Edward because all the shadows have some sort of beef with him at this point. <laughs> so even if Louise doesn't really care all that much about Emiliko, she's like, if it gets, if, if it gives me some sort of revenge against Edward, then I'll fucking do it. I'll help you. And of course, Patrick is willing to help because it's Emiliko. And the same goes with John, but John is really just cares more for, you know, for, for Kate and, and a little bit for Emiliko in general. Well, with Sean anyways. What was that sentence? <laughs> So we got the four shadows teaming up and they're gonna go on a rescue mission for Emiliko. And we did see Emiliko out here getting bound and ready to drink some more dank juice, I assume. We heard a, a women's voice, so I would assume that there's another person there helping Edward out. It might be Eileen, who knows? You know, they do they do end up helping each other, although it would be so fucking funny if it was just Edward in a high-pitched voice. <laughs> that would just be absolutely fantastic. <laughs> also, how did Edward even do this? He just walked out, he knocked on the door, and he had just hoped that Emily goes just gonna open the door down there and be like, yo, what's up? And then he's just, he's out here, he just grabs her up and be like, all right, time to take you out. <laughs> I want to see this kidnapping in process. How did you, how did you do it, Edward? <laughs> and couldn't you find a longer dress? Or were, or were you really that tall and were all the veil dolls just that short? <laughs> Anyways, that's about it for me. If I have anything else to say, I will write it in the description down below. Thank you guys for sticking around and I will see you guys in the next video.